chocolate chip cookies are missing. Can Pip crack the case and satisfy his sweet tooth? This story is a delicious way to boost your English. So, without further delay, let's embark on our narrative journey. The aroma of freshly baked chocolate chip cookies hung heavy, a siren song for Pip's insatiable sweet tooth. He practically skipped into the kitchen, his nose twitching like a bloodhound. But instead of the usual overflowing jar, Pip was met with an empty glass container. Agads! Pip exclaimed. The great cookie caper is afoot. Pip, a self-proclaimed junior detective, was known for his knack for sniffing out mysteries, especially those involving sweets. Today, the stakes were high. His beloved cookies, the ones his grandma baked, with a sprinkle of magic, were gone. This was a crime, demanding immediate investigation. Bruno, the mischievous beagle, with a penchant for pilfering pastries, was the prime suspect. Pip found him, sprawled under the table, a suspicious dusting of chocolate clinging to his whiskers. Bruno, Pip interrogated, did you have a clandestine rendezvous with the cookie jar? Bruno blinked innocently, his tail thumping in counterpoint. Pip wasn't easily swayed. Don't play coy, old chum, he said, using a phrase from detective shows. The evidence is mounting. Bruno sighed dramatically, as if to say, fine, you caught me and launched into puppy dog eyes. Pip, though tempted by the cuteness overload, remained firm. His investigation led him on a whirlwind tour, under couch cushions, behind curtains, even his sister's room, a place usually avoided like a plague. Everywhere, dead ends and cryptic clues, a rogue chocolate chip, a faint chocolate scent, from the laundry basket, thanks to a rogue sock, and a suspicious paw print larger than Bruno's. The mystery deepened. Pip scratched his head, his brow furrowed. This was no ordinary cookie heist, it was worthy of Sherlock Bones himself. But Pip, fueled by unwavering determination, and a growing craving for chocolate, was determined to crack the case. Just then, a flash of movement caught his eye. A gray blur shot past, a trail of crumbs marking its path. With renewed vigor, Pip chased the culprit, his heart pounding with the thrill. The chase led outside, through the backyard, and finally to the old oak tree house. There, perched precariously, sat a smug-looking squirrel, cheeks bulging with stolen cookies. Aha! Pip cried triumphantly. The culprit is revealed. You, Mr. Squirrel, are under arrest for the grand larceny of chocolate chip cookies. Startled, the squirrel dropped its loot. Pip, with the swiftness of a seasoned detective, scooped up the scattered cookies. He then gave the squirrel a stern lecture about private property and the consequences of sweet-tooth-fueled crimes. The squirrel, chastised but unrepentant, scurried back into the tree. Pip savored the first delicious bite of his reclaimed cookie, a sense of satisfaction washing over him. The great cookie caper had been solved, justice served, and his sweet tooth finally satiated. Congratulations on completing missing case of chocolate chip cookies. Your dedication to learning English is truly commendable. Let's revisit the key words and phrases from our story to ensure they stick. A quick refresher to boost your English prowess. Number one, aroma, a pleasant smell. Number two, siren song, something that is very tempting or attractive. Number three, skip, to move quickly and lightly, often with jumps. Number four, twitch, to move suddenly and slightly. Number five, plummet, to fall suddenly and steeply. Number six, agats, an exclamation of surprise or dismay, mostly used humorously. Number seven, commence, to begin. Number eight, sniff out, 
to discover or find out something by using your sense of smell or by careful investigation. Number 9. Crime, an act that is punishable by law. Number 10. Investigation, the act of carefully examining something to discover facts about it. Number 11. Pilfer, to steal something, especially something small or unimportant. Number 12. Interrogate, to question someone formally, especially in order to get information. Number 13. Clandestine, secret or hidden. Number 14. Rendezvous, a secret meeting. Number 15. Swayed, influenced or persuaded. Number 16. Play coy, to pretend to be shy or innocent. Number 17. Evidence, anything that is used to prove something. Number 18. Cuteness overload, an excessive amount of cuteness. Number 19. Investigation, the act of carefully examining something to discover facts about it. Number 20. Couch cushions, soft pads that are placed on the seats and backs of couches. Number 21. Plague, a widespread disease that causes a large number of deaths. Number 22. Deepen, to become more intense or serious. Number 23. Concentration, the act of focusing your attention on something. Number 24. Determination, a firm decision to do something. Number 25. Craving, a strong desire for something. Number 26. Crack the case, to solve a mystery or crime. Number 27. Flash of movement, a sudden, quick movement. Number 28. Thrill, a feeling of excitement or pleasure that is caused by something dangerous or unusual. Number 29. Chase, to run after someone or something in order to catch them. Number 30. Grand larceny, the theft of property that is worth a significant amount of money. Number 31. Skip a beat, to hesitate or stop for a moment. Number 32. Play coy, to pretend to be shy or innocent. Number 33. Sniff something out, to discover or find out something. Number 34. Get under someone's skin, to annoy or irritate someone. Number 35. Crack the case, to solve a mystery or crime. Number 36. Hung heavy, filled the air strongly. Number 37. Insatiable, impossible to satisfy. Number 38. Bloodhound, a breed of dog known for its keen sense of smell. Number 39. Self-proclaimed, declared oneself to be something. Number 40. Stakes were high, the potential consequences were significant. Number 41. Penchant, a strong or habitual liking for something. Number 42. Sprawled, laying down in a relaxed or untidy way. Number 43. Clinging, sticking to something tightly. Number 44. Old chum, a close friend, informal. Number 45. Dead ends, situations with no way forward. Number 46. Brow furrowed, frowned with concentration. Number 47. Culprit, the person who is responsible for a crime. Number 48. Smug looking, having a self-satisfied expression. Number 49. Chastised, scolded or criticized. Number 50. Savored, to enjoy something slowly and with pleasure. Number 51. Washing over him, a feeling that completely surrounds someone. Number 52. Scurried back, to move quickly on all fours, especially in a frightened way. Number 53. Stern, strict and serious. Number 54. Revealed, made known or shown. Thanks for joining us on this delightful journey through The Case of the Missing Cookies. Rewatch to help these vocabularies stick forever. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more lessons. Check out the video on screen for more fun ways to learn English. See you next time.